at Google Cloud Next, and I'm with none other than Chloe Condon, one of the stars of the developer keynote. Thank you for being here, Chloe. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you, my teammate. Yes, colleague and friend, I'd say. So there was so much wonderful information covered in the dev keynote, so many good bits and pieces. I want to focus in on a few sections that you really you know, were showing off. So let's start with building generative AI apps with Gemini, right? The, the topic of the moment, if you will. Talk to me a little bit about your favorite in that section. Ooh, so I think the coolest part about that section is just so, showing how nicely we play with other tools and other companies. It was so cool to have Guillermo from Vercel on stage. Um, and that demo that they showed of not only, so we started, for folks who didn't watch it, we started from just a video of my bookshelf, and that was my real bookshelf uh, at my home. <laughs> and we had all these books on there that had everything from, you know, it's me. So I had my fiction, I had RuPaul's biography on there, but I also had a bunch of travel books on there or books that mentioned locations. So what you saw in that demo was we took a video, it was able to identify from the titles and the authors um, where, different locations that we would maybe travel to. And then from there, what you saw was us taking that from Generative AI Studio into this Vercel app that basically we just uploaded that video and we said, where should I travel? And then we got not only, like, I think like a, it's just like Guillermo said in it, you know, chatbots are so 1980. Like we're in this world now where we can just upload a video, ask where can I travel? And not only does it give me flight options, but it gave me hotel options. I could pick my seats and that was live updating the seat choice in there. So I just think it's so cool. I don't know about you, but I grew up a smarter child on AOL Instant oh Messenger. Yes. And it's so <laughs> crazy. I remember as a kid being like, how does this know what I'm asking it? And how is it responding so fast? It must be a human. And we're now in this era, we're in the future now, um, where we have these chatbots that can literally not only just recommend travel, like that's so 2023, this is a chatbot that does multiple things and has all this context and it's just so cool what we're able to do with AI. I totally agree. I really do say like, wow, look at the, the time that we're in. And actually audibly there were wows in the audience when you showed that seat selection, right? Yeah. Like, okay, tell me where I can go, but also find me flights and find me the seats and everything like that in that one uh, experience, but right? Typically that would have to be multiple chatbots, right? Like you'd have one flight chatbot, you'd have one hotel chatbot, maybe you'd have a travel recommender chatbot, but this was all in one place and it blew my mind. Yeah, I, and it's I loved it. such a realistic use case, right? Especially everyone who came here to Next could have used that chatbot. Yes, oh my gosh, I could have used it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. To simplify our travel needs. Amazing, okay, and then the other section that you did that I really liked was using Gemini for modern ops, right? Ops can be interesting sometimes. So walk me through what you were talking about there. Okay, so I used to, fun fact, I used to work in the observability space, so that part was one of my favorites. I kind of got, got to go back to my, my roots. The most fascinating thing about observability is how do you know what to look for if you don't know what's going to go wrong? They call it chaos engineering for a reason. It truly is chaotic. I love what Charity said about the real chaos is how are your users going to use your app? You just never know how a user is going to click a button weird or like put some weird thing into your, maybe it's a chatbot or whatever it may be. But the cool thing about that demo was we were debugging Honeycomb with Honeycomb. So it's very meta, very circular in a way. Um, so Charity's demo was really great, but I also really love what Steve showed off, which is we could compare. So we basically had this, this very basic response, right? Where we're like, hey, we're looking for products in our database, tell us which ones match this thing. And it just re responded with like the ID of the items, right? But then we improved it with a much more in detail, in depth, like, hey, give me the names of the products but also give me a description of what they are and like you know so then we did that and then we locked that in and it was so cool because you have this comparison like a it's almost like a before and after right you're like okay here's our original one here's the one that's way way better and then you can lock that in as your ground truth and then that, that helps train the whole rest of your data sets going forward because the whole point of that that section is essentially you know you can do this yourself and i asked steve before we wrote that section i was like how do people do this without this tool. Because this is the compare feature is a brand new feature. And he said, honestly, people just 
write it on a post-it or share it in Slack. And my literal response was that, to that comment was, so how does that, how do best prompts not get lost in all the memes and like, cause you and I, you know, we work on a team that's very meme heavy and we share a lot of fun like emojis and stuff like that. But it's true, like those things can get lost in the shuffle. So that feature literally exists to just bring everybody in the organization on the same page so they can be using the best possible prompts. And I think that's so cool. It solves the problem of like, literally like people were just passing each other notes being like, hey, this is how I did it. Oh my goodness. Now it's all in the yes. system. We love a single source of truth, yeah. right? Where everybody can go off of. They cut my line in the keynote that I wrote about. It'll get lost in all the meme chatter, but that's such a real developer thing, right? Yeah, like. Absolutely. How do you make sure that the important stuff doesn't get lost among the memes? <laughs> uh, truly. Speaking of important stuff, we're here at Next. Yes. And you know, there's so much work and time and blood, sweat and tears that goes into this. But what is your favorite part of coming to Next? Ooh, you know, the hallway conversations. Um, I have met so many people, Googlers and non-Googlers, all around the expo hall and literally in the hallway where people will be like, oh my gosh, hey, like you work on this team or oh, remember me? Like, or hey, I follow you on Twitter or whatever that may be. And though that's what I've missed the most in a post pandemic world, because I used to travel all the time and do conferences and speak at stuff. But there's really something to be said for the real in-person connections that happen here. Lasting friendships that last a long, a lifetime. Um, but it's incredible. I, you know, I've gotten jobs. I've gotten opportunities in the past from just being in the room and, and being around people. So it's just been really fun to talk to people, see what they're like, actually talk to people about what they're building, how they're using our tools, but also running into old friends and like yes, seeing teammates. teammates. Oh my gosh, oh, yes. seeing all the teammates. Um, so that's been really fun. And I think that I also just really loved from the keynote perspective, like meeting all the people who, I mean, it takes a village to put on a big show like that. Like truly hundreds and hundreds of people. Like you see, if you're watching it at home, you see maybe, I don't know how many people were in the keynote, like 15 people, but behind the scenes, there are hundreds of people who make that show happen. And just working on something of that size in person, because remember virtual events? Oh yes, yes. It's very different. different. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I think that's what I miss the most is just the real human element of it. You know, with all this talk of AI, we gotta have some human. Exactly, <laughs> with all the AI, it's you, the human connection, you can't replace yes. that, you know? I would agree with you. It's so nice to just be in the presence of other people. Yes. Feel better. And to see you, that's been a good part of it. <laughs> and speaking of, you know, hanging out, working together, like you said, there's hundreds of people that go into putting together an event like this, a keynote. Uh, so talk to me about what that was like. What was the time, like everything that goes into it? Give me a little rundown, a little behind the scenes. Oh my gosh. So it's so it's always so fascinating, right? As people who make content, everybody else sees like an hour long performance and then they probably don't think about it again. This has been a life changing experience for me. Um, there's so much time and energy. We probably started working on this, I think, end of last year, early this year, maybe as, as soon as January of this current year. So. This has been, you know, and you saw there were so many people in it, not only just Googlers, people externally as well. So a lot of the writing of the different sections and making sure that, you know, we're, we're highlighting the products in the best way and having rehearsals and like making sure that we uh, really show off these products because we know these products like the back of our hand. We work on them all the time. But that's another part of your brain, right, to think of, OK, how to like we've been in stealth mode, like working on all these fun things that are getting released, but how do we present that and how do we show it off? And also it was just such a pleasure to meet. I met a lot of those people in the keynote for the first time in our rehearsals that we've had recently. Um, so we, a lot of our rehearsals were virtual. We had our first in-person rehearsal, if you can believe it, like a week and a half ago. So seeing it all come together has been really incredible and everyone did such a great job. Um, and yeah, all the people, I mean, just think about it. There's a whole team that just works on the demos and there's a whole team of people who just work on like the different sections and the speaking topics and everything like that. So yeah, it's, it feels, I feel like I just gave birth. <laughs> like, I feel like this is, this is a, it's been a very big, my baby is now out in the world and people can watch it, but 
truly, when you see that hour long video, that was about a, a quarter of my year, probably. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, of course, the dev keynote was recorded, and we'll put the link to that down in the description. So, when you watch it, you can think about this all the I, hard work. I'm going in the pink blazer. Yeah. It's a little hard to miss. <laughs> all right. Well, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.